Hi all. Thank you for joining again this this evening or morning or afternoon, night maybe, uh, depending on where you are. At, uh, at here it's uh, 2030 CEST. Um, so time for me to do some coding. I've had a busy week. We had a holiday yesterday, so I wasn't online yesterday due to well having the holiday. Uh, it was a great, great weather this past weekend over here. So I've been barbecuing all weekend, um, eating a lot of meat, which is, well, have, creating a lot of ketogenic recipes. Uh, so uh, it was a great weekend. It's a bit warm in here. I, I guess it's about 26, 27 degrees Celsius. So I'm, I'm sweating a bit, I'm having a t-shirt on. Um, let me know uh, how you are. Uh, is it hot over over where you are, or what have you done this weekend? I've heard it was a holiday in, in a couple of other countries also. I don't know how this works. Uh, we have, hey Kevin, thank you for joining. <clears throat> thank you. So uh, did you have a holiday yesterday in the states also? Uh, we have uh, the 40 days after Easter, it's called Pinkstern. I don't know what's it called in English. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I, I was off doing fun stuff with the kids and, and the wife. Uh, but today back to work and uh, it was a great day. Um, and I have a talk to, to uh, well work on uh, next week. Uh, well, next week I have to give this this talk at, at a virtual conference, and I have to do some prep work, some demo work, uh, which I want to do today. Uh, as you might know, no official holiday. Okay. Okay, that's too bad. Or at least, well, you got to do some some work. And I saw there's some stuff happening in the states, which isn't that pleasant. I hope you're safe. And not well. I, I, I'd like to say too involved, but that's not the correct wording. Uh, but ho I hope you're safe and healthy. So uh, um, for this talk, which I want to do uh, today or uh, for next week, is uh, I want to implement some some events and commands in the solution I was creating uh, earlier uh, in, in these sessions. Um, if you followed me along, you know I've spoken at the SDN, uh, well, the SDN cast, the Software Developer Network cast last week, and they they are hosting a well virtual event next week, which I was invited to speak again. So. Uh, have to come up with this with new fresh talk, which I want to do some eventing and and uh, creating some cues to send commands to, which are going to be picked up, stuff like this. So in order to do so, I have to create well a queue, obviously to send commands to, and I also want to well work work with events. Um, and these events um, will be published in Azure on Event Grid because Event Grid is meant to do well to handle events and lots of events. Azure is using this uh, uh, on itself also, so a lot of Azure services are connected to Event Grid, and whenever something happens, it emits an event to Event Grid, and you can pick it up if you want to. And you can also implement this in your own solution. So this sh should be, well, rather doable. I've, I've done this a couple of times for customers. I just don't have the, the code of these customers on my machine. So I have to figure it out a bit again. Uh, same goes for uh, working with the queues and the commands. Uh, I want to send commands to a queue, which will be picked up by some function probably because functions have, well, native integration with a lot of messaging services in Azure, so it makes sense to use it. 
Um, before I started the stream, I, I was uh, well doing some prep work because uh, you probably don't want to see me writing ARM templates again all stream. So I've uh, well let, let me just show you. I have this uh, ARM template where I have uh, added the storage account and I've added a new event grid custom topic where I want to add a subscription to. Uh, this doesn't... Yeah, oh uh, yeah, this, these are the variables. So the actual implementation is somewhere, uh, somewhere over here. So I have this uh, storage account and a topic and when deploying or I, I just push this to the master and I saw this is longer as 24 characters. Um, storage accounts are rather restrictive in well what you can call them. So they have to be between 3 and 24 characters in length. Uh, they have to be lowercase, you can't use dashes, uh, stuff like this. So it's annoying to come up with your own unique name. There are some helper methods like unique string or unique, I think it's unique string and you can specify the length of it. Um, and I've used it a couple of times and it's just, most of the time I just try to come up with a name which isn't taken yet. If I, Secure API, how many characters is this? 26, that's the storage, storage. Secure, something like this. This is 21, 21 characters, should work. Lowered, so where's my git fork? So what have you been doing uh, this weekend, Kevin? Uh, let's just turn on the music to entertain you and me while typing. Um, and pushing it. Not much to do. This a good thing. Hanging out with the kids, that's the best thing. So if I remember correctly, you're in the Kansas City area, which is warm-ish. So hanging out in the garden probably, at the pool. We just discovered a nice swimming uh, place nearby. It's like a 10 minute drive uh, and where we can go to the beach with the kids and they have a small swimming pool for the, well, super small kids. Uh, and they can walk 600 meters in uh, at the beach in, in the water. Uh, and it's still only, well, what is it? 40, 40 50 centimeters deep. So it's rather safe for uh, a parent with small kids, uh, which is great for me because my kids are two and three years old. Virginia, Virginia Beach, nice. <laughs> Barbecue is much better. <laughs> yeah, indeed. I was in. I don't know if if you saw saw this on, uh, on Twitter, because. I was inspired by uh, Richard Campbell, you probably know him, uh, he, had, uh, cr he had created some bacon bomb uh, last week somewhere, so I was like, that looks awesome. So what I've done is created something similar. So I've created a layer of bacon added some some meat some ground meat on it added some extra 
crispy, well, some some baked bacon on it, rolled it up, and added some some stuff uh, in it to make it have this form. Having it three hours on the barbecue on the smoker, and it looked like well, this was after two hours. It was still a bit rare and pork. You, you should need pork rare. So when it was 70 degrees on the inside, it looked like this. Had to turn up the heat in the end, so that's the crispy bits. Because, well, my kids were getting hungry, and me too. Yeah, it, it was amazing. It, this was delicious. And luckily for me, my kids didn't eat a lot, so there was more for me. I didn't eat any salad. I was full after having had, well, more as half of this stuff. It was amazing. I'll be sure to, well, eat it or create it again. So this. Deployment is running or not. Ah, there it is. If this one fails, I'll just deploy it via the terminal. Because that's a bit faster. Cute. I'll just boot up the terminal. Started. Um, okay, so now I have the storage account, which I need. Um, obviously, the, the the connection string to later on. Don't need the connection string to this one. So I need to get to the app settings. I'll just assume the deployment will work. And the app settings. Mm. So the storage account. I will be using the storage account queue uh, to send commands to. I could also use a service bus queue because it's well, pretty much the same. Uh, there are some small differences between the two, but for now I don't need the capabilities of the service bus queue. It's like the service bus queue is. When you mature up and you want, want or need the capabilities of a service bus queue or the service bus, you'll start using it like first in, first out, uh, guaranteed delivery. Um, I think there's also a, a, a guaranteed, uh, guaranteed want delivery, uh, st stuff like this. So it, it's pretty useful, service bus. Uh, it's just too, well, too big, too enterprisey for me for now. I just need to send messages to some endpoint and be done with it. So maybe if, maybe I'll try it later on. Just not now. I'll add a setting. Um, paper command. Uh, what do I need? I need the name of the storage account and the queue name, but also I can add this later on. I, I'm not sure. I need the primary key. Yeah, I need the primary key and the name of the storage account. I'll just go check it when I'm in the portal. Should be easy enough. I've done this. It's probably on some of my older ah, this app insights. App insights. No, it's not here yet. Deploy. So the ARM template has been deployed. Refreshing. It's 
So I have this topic now and I have this storage account with a pretty weird name. So I'll add a queue. Um, oh, let me go back. So I have this uh, backend for frontend API and uh, two backend services. Uh, this one is behind the VNet, and this one has um, this one has uh, role-based uh, security authorization. Uh, this one has role-based authorization uh, on it. Um, I have to consolidate all of these changes, all all of these well different measures of security later on. Uh, but for now, I'll just keep them like this. So and what I want to do now is send a command from this API to the speakers API. And obviously you don't do this by making a direct call, or that's not very obvious, but I want to make the both services loosely coupled. So I'll add a queue in between. I'll add a queue in between, which I'll add on the storage account. And whenever a speaker is added via a command, let's say a speaker is added, which is an event, I'll emit this event to event grid, to an event grid topic, which I'll add a subscription to later on. So one of the downsides of having storage queues is you can't deploy them via ARM templates. Don't know why still not there they've added the creation of containers i think about one or two years ago it took them a while uh, still queues not possible so there is uh, azure deployment scripts which is a preview uh, preview Use deployment scripts. Yeah, so this, which is uploading a PowerShell script to Azure and invoking it in your deployment. I haven't looked into it much yet, but I still, I, I do want to use this because this is awesome stuff. This is awesome stuff. It solves a lot of issues. It also open ups, opens up a big, well, ball of mud. Uh, I, that's not a correct term. I, I think it does. Ha it can have a lot of issues if not used correctly. So, like Uncle Ben says, "With great power comes great responsibility." So use this with care, or at least that's what I think now. I haven't tried it yet. But being able to run PowerShell in a deployment, uh, during a deployment, is powerful. Because now you have to, well, for creating a queue, you have to uh, do some PowerShell inside your deployment pipeline, create them manually, or do something else. And this is annoying as hell. Because what I have to do now is create a queue myself and then after I've done this I can create the subscription in the ARM template the, the event grid subscription to the queue so it's a two-step deployment already defined a I want to call it speaker API events. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh yeah, this is the... Something I haven't mentioned yet. Um, I will be creating a, top, a subscription to this topic. And you can choose what type of subscription you want to. To have so you can subscribe to webhooks like Azure Functions, 
you can subscribe to service bus queues, storage queues, and a couple of other uh, event handlers. I want to use storage queues because they're cheap, easy to manage, easy to work with, and rather stable. It's storage, so it's always online. And if storage isn't online, there's a pretty big chance Azure in this region is down also. So I don't care much. If storage is down, pretty much everything will be down in my uh, in my uh, setup. So it looks a bit like this. Uh, subscription queue name. So this is. Uh, I had removed this before uh, because I figured or I discovered this has to be a two step deployment because I have to create the queue first and it's red. Why is this red? Topic dot instance name. Uh, so this is the this will be where the script where the subscription will hang on. Speaker commands, and I'll add a speaker commands also. So and there's the access keys which I need to uh, to connect to this stuff. To connect to this account. So the app service is back again. Are they? Which side is back into front end? Yes. is correct speaker commands yes mm, do I need to have events no I don't need the other queue name over here list keys if I'm not mistaken let me check um, so I've probably got something on my github which I can copy paste I'm not sure how or I don't know how this looks like from the top of my head so what do I have? Mm. Um, I'll open this one, which might have something. CFP exchange, that could be it. Um, so this one doesn't have any deployment. CFP exchange. 
I'll just check Gerald his repo because Rick has added lots of stuff on it. Let's see if we have a list keys somewhere over here. Yes, web job storage. This looks like what I need. Thank you. So if you're not familiar with CFP exchange, you can do a PRs to it, of, of course, but it's, it's a great site for speakers and conferences. Um, if you come across a CFP, you can submit it over here and um, it will be listed. So a lot of conferences are virtual nowadays, so the event location, you can just well, choose whatever, or at least what I think. And there's still a couple of uh, CFPs open. I think I have to submit a couple. Hmm, not, not much new, well, it makes sense because not a lot of conferences having their CFP open at the moment. Internal dot instance name. So this is storage count. Um, yeah. This is probably not preview anymore. Still. I won't fix this right now because it's not the goal of this session to create the perfect and latest ARM template. I want to send a command from this API from this backend front end to the speakers API. Which means Speaks API also needs this information, but it probably makes sense to create a function app for this. Yes, it does. So I've got this now. Let me. Um, I'll just deploy this from the CLI because I've booted it up. Make it a bit bigger. Hopefully it works. It's it's not red, so that's good. So in case you're wondering, the SDN where I'm speaking next week is uh, the 9th of June. Uh, I'm speaking over here with, uh, well, by luck, my co-worker, uh, Eduard Keilholz, also uh, speaks on, uh, well, he speaks on SignalR. We're using SignalR with Azure Functions. Cool stuff, cool stuff. And I'll be doing, uh, well, a bit uh, messaging. Uh, 
I wonder how this will go, this event will go. It, it looks awesome. It's a two hour event, so not, not very big. Still, I want to ace it. An error has occurred. The request is invalid. The filter. Oh. Um, I thought you could specify an empty filter. Maybe not. Or an empty, uh, a all filter. I thought that was possible. Let's try an empty one. Cool, works. It almost looks like like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so I've got these two cool stuff. I think this is correct. And do I also got the subscription? Yes. There's a subscription to the storage key. Nice. Uh, a function app, yes, because let's assume I can send a command to where it's my browser. Let's, let's get ahead of myself a bit. And let's assume I can send a command from this API to the storage account to the, the, the queue name, speaker command queue. Let's assume I can do this now. I need a function app. Or I need, I need, don't specifically need, but I want to have a function app which will pick up this command and do something with, well, the speaker repository maybe. In a production environment, you would probably have these services in different resource groups, having them use different services, stuff like this, different security roles, whatever. Um, for simplicity's sake, I have them in one resource group, uh, so they are located next to each other, and it's easy to, well, mix and match the resources, but still, it's good, or I can, I can have a function app inside, uh, next to this focusing on the speaker stuff. I know there's one in CFP exchange. I created it myself. I know Rick has, Rick van der Bos, also a great guy, has made some changes to it recently. So let's see. Function app. Probably copy this properties resources and app settings. Okay, it's great if you can just copy paste this stuff instead of figuring it out again and again and again. So, app insights speakers instance name. This is the speakers, so I'll just place it below this one. Comma. <clears throat> I 
I need a function app. So APIs, it's not an API, it's more of a developer. Uh, let's paper. Okay, it's good for now. Uh, it's dependent on the hosting plan. So that's what I can copy paste from here. Whoa. depends on the server farm and also on a storage account to create another storage account uh, and why you ask well if you have a function app it, it the a function app needs uh, some some storage account in order to persist some state to run some timers to well do stuff and and store the stuff which is, well, you can use any storage account, but what, what I've seen in, in, well, actual scenarios is if you don't create a dedicated storage account for this, uh, the IOPS, and well, and, and you max out the IOPS during production, uh, your function apps will stop functioning or at least slow down because it doesn't have enough IOPS to read and write, well, its own state, so it can't run uh, anymore, if, that's ma if that makes sense. I haven't done some RCA on it, uh, it's just something I noticed. So if you mix the, the function, oh, runtime storage account with actual storage accounts, which you use for your solution, uh, you're asking for problems but name um, internal and Storage accounts are rather cheap or free. Pico worker instance name. Okay, now I need to create this one which is like copy pasting this one mm, okay function app name yeah i need a function oh that's the Oh, 
don't think I'm going to show it this is good. It's not a serverless uh, function app because, well, it's running on this server farm instead of consumption. Still, doesn't matter. And on the storage account and on itself. And the job storage. That's this one. And I also need to copy it over here. Same goes for this one. Oh, I messed up something. So this. Okay, so that's good. Um, function extensions version. I think we're at three now. So I don't need all of this stuff. App insights. Yes. Please. Um, this is the internal storage, which I've added a couple of seconds ago. So this. Should do it. Let Let me just. Google this. Runtime. Yes. So I want to target .NET Core 3. And that's all there is to it for the function app. Still something inside of that. Probably a comma. Let's see if it works. So what we should be seeing now is a new storage account will be added and a function app will be added. I'll be recording a 4.NET webcast tomorrow. We'll be talking about social networks and how to set them up and stuff like this. It will be in Dutch, uh, so I'll do the recording tomorrow in, uh, in the evening. Do some editing on, on it and publish it hopefully next week. Well, let's, let me check. Yeah, probably the 11th. Probably most of the time I publish them on Thursday, like the first Thursday of the month of, or the last one. But we had some delays due to, well, sick, sickness and health stuff and being back with work. So we're a bit behind our schedule. So 
So is there something interesting you you think we should cover uh, the on this uh, Ford Netweb cast, which is in Dutch, so not for everyone, or at least unless you like learning Dutch. So there's a lot of new stuff coming up in Azure, but we're also talking about the general software development practices and whatever crosses, well, whatever we think is interesting. Or if you think think of something I should cover in these, uh, these sessions. So I have a couple of things lined up, like the deployment scripts. I definitely want to check out the deployment scripts. But what I also want to do is, well, doing some cleanup in this solution. Yeah, and I still have to figure out how to do the swap. Because the swap of my app service keep, kept on crashing and I still need to figure out why. Lots of stuff to... Wow! The deployment has succeeded! First time right. almost good at doing JSON stuff. <laughs> Refresh. So we have a couple of new things like the function app and the worker storage. So let's see if I click it. No errors yet. Oh, and I haven't seen this new, the new UI yet. Oh, this looks so much better as what it was. Yeah, Jonathan, whoop whoop. It just works. Oh, and I, I so love this, well, new UI. I haven't seen it before because I'm not doing a lot of stuff in the portal these days. It's so much faster compared to, well, the old style. And most of the time when you were in the, well, the old pages of the function app, you still want to go to these pages because this is where the action happens. This is where you can actually do stuff. Well, all of this stuff is also being deployed. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. So I think the infrastructure is set up correctly now. And that function app and storage. I'll push it just to kick off another deployment to, well, have another deployment. Also, go to Visual Studio Services, add a new folder, Worker, add new project, Function App. Um, speaker. Uh, what is the speaker worker? I have a Q trigger. The name. What are we making? Well, um, Nothing very special. Um, it's more of a what this solution is. It's a well, uh, an allegaartje. It's like uh, combined combined stuff of tech I want to uh, check out. Uh, so what I did in the, the, the earliest sessions is. 
creating these three different APIs, one of them having um, authorization using managed identities and AAD uh, roles, uh, app roles on it. That's the speaker API. Uh, I want to work with uh, VNet and VNet integration. Uh, so that's what the conferences API is about. And uh, the secure API, that API is, well, kind of a backend for front end. It connects to both, retrieves data and, well, sends it to you. And uh, what I want to do now is um, adding some commands and events to this solution in order to, well, do some eventing and, and uh, loosely coupled uh, commands, uh, making the services lo more loosely coupled. Um, uh, and that's just to, to do some prep work for my session on the virtual SDN event next week. So I'm a bit late with the prep work. So I hope all of this demo stuff will work out. Uh, but that's what I'm making right now. So it's just a demo app. It's not something we or I will actually use, well, just for demo purposes. So if you check me out on any or real or virtual conferences in the upcoming times, you will see a lot of familiar code because I will probably be using this solution for it. Which reminds me, I need to add some tags to the repository in order to quickly backtrack to a specific state. Uh, cleanup tasks and tags for the tasks on specific states. Last session I gave was, I think, in the well which was last week where i talked at the sdn cast on managed identities and role based uh, or uh, using app roles for uh, authorization and i also had a lot of virtual networking stuff on my in my code so it was well not messy i had collapsed them uh, but it's still something you don't need to see so if I went back a couple of commits in the, in the past, I wouldn't have annoyed the audience with all of this VNet stuff. So adding tags to the repo is a good idea. Cool. Fa Great you like it. Um, so the connection string setting name. I know this. I know this stuff. Because I just added it. This is the name. And the queue name is speaker commands. It's great we have some skeleton and some stuff in, in this solution, so I can just copy paste. This feels much more like an actual working day. Copy paste code all over see if it works oh cool well great you're we'll keep on watching on your phone jonathan thanks for being such a fan <laughs> 100 tabs in chrome wow wow you probably have 120 gigabytes of RAM in order to have so many tabs open. The regular Chrome or are you using uh, the, the Edge, uh, Edge Chrome? Yeah, I'm using Firefox myself and I have, since working from home, the normal Chrome. Ah, cool. Since I'm working from home, uh, I have lots and lots of tabs open on stuff I want to read. So uh, when I'm sitting on the couch binging some Netflix, I'm also reading uh, my Twitter and a lot of interesting tweets come by. So I send them to my Firefox on the desktop. And when I start up my browser in the morning to do working, 10 new tabs show up because they're being sent from my phone and I have to 
well, or I want to read them, but I also want to start my working day. So I have like, I can show you in my other tab. This is the list of tabs I have open on stuff I actually want to read. So a lot of stuff on DDD development. Uh, well, I have a couple of them open, but DDD streaming, event storming. Uh, well, you can check all of them. New stuff on Cosmos DB. Uh, lots and lots and lots of stuff. I want to read or see. So I've, I've bought the A7 III, uh, the Sony A7 III uh, Mark III. So I want to check out what all of these features are there are in this camera. So a couple of YouTube videos on them. I'm using the Fincy Resolve for video editing. So how to create animated overlays to make my stream better. Probably also something on how the Fincy Resolve works. Oh, still my build schedule is on this. So, you know, lots, lots and lots of stuff. First world problems, right? So, let me build this one. Hopefully, yeah, you have to resolve it. <laughs> this is annoying. Why isn't it resolving it? Oh. Hmm, strange. Pretty sharp, uh, we'll probably find it. Yes, this workshops packages this. Okay. I thought it was a different one. Apparently not. Let me Google this. Q trigger negates. Trigger. Um, Q trigger attribute. Yeah, this is the package I had expected. Install. That's better. Okay. So the local settings. Okay, cool. It works. Should work. Uh, 
shall I do a right click deployment? Don't tell anyone I did this. Premium Epic System. Why? <laughs> the universe doesn't want me to do a right click deployment. Can't I just pick? Um, yeah, this is the one. Publish. Don't tell. So now it's there, or it should be there. Oh, make a note to deploy this via the pipeline. Deploy manager okay. this pipeline. I don't feel like doing this right now because I've been streaming for one hour now and the only thing I've done is deploying the infrastructure and creating a new worker. So, but it is there probably. Where's the browser? So do I have a function? Yes, pick up speaker command. So it's there. And probably locks some stuff to add in. So. <laughs> That's the normal development part. Yeah. Creating notes like, yeah, we need to do this better uh, in the future. And the future is always tomorrow. I'll tr I try to do, I, I'm trying to be a good citizen and actually do all of this to do stuff. But it's hard. If it works, it works. Uh, let me close a bit. Yeah, yeah, it's always slower. Also, for these for these sessions, it's uh, when I started out in my first sense, I was like, yeah, we're gonna do this, this, and this, and I'm gonna deploy all of this stuff. And after one and a half hours of streaming, the only thing I had done is create a solution with projects. I was like, what? I've been busy one one and a half hours and didn't do anything anything useful so regular development is slow streaming while developing is even slower for some reason maybe because i'm talking too much that's probably it But now that I have the stuff deployed, we need some contract between these two solutions, uh, these two projects, because the secure API will send a command to do something, uh, probably as JSON, because JSON is, well, the way of communicating these days. Uh, and the speaker API has to pick it up, or, uh, well, this worker has to pick it up. So we need a contract. A contract. So how to call this? How to call this? So I need to... Uh... Is it domain logic? No, not actually. It's... Yeah, kind of is. 
Chile is a domain project, a class library with my contracts, which holds the commands. I think. No. in the root folder because I don't know what I want to call it yet or where it will go library class library standard C sharp So what I want to do now is add speaker. So I had this weather forecast controller and I refactored this a bit to having actual speakers over here. So having some speakers and retrieving them. Easy as this. So I have this list of speakers internally. If the contracts are shared between projects, yes, yeah, I should call it domain, right? I think domain is kind of a loaded term. Mm. Okay, okay. Something else. So I have, I now have this, yeah. This is the biggest pain when doing, when having multiple services, having to share the same models. Because I've implemented this model in the speaker API called speaker with a name and a level. And I also want to send this stuff via a command. Then again, this is the reading model, and the reading model can differ. Still, I, this is a public, yeah, it's a public model. Other services will be using it, or at least one. So I need to command. How do you call a read model? This one over here. Command add speaker. And who's done this? 
that's what I all that's also what I want to know. Um, later, I don't want to know this right now. I just don't want to complicate this stuff because uh, what I want to do is adding the user who is adding it. But I don't have login yet on the API, the, the front end API, so that's not what I can do yet. Adding speaker. I have to hurry up because I only have like 15 minutes left this evening. Delete. Um, Dependencies at dot domain. I'll just call it domain. It feels good. I was thinking about this. While coding. So add speaker. So now I have this one. Test backend. So I want to add a new controller. Um, API controller having a post doing an ad Over here, no, only gets Hey, thank you for the follow, J Jonathan. Are you using Streamlabs? Because those notifications for messages are nice. Um, yes, I'm using Streamlabs partly. Um, I have Streamlabs set up to well, for my chat and for my notifications. And I'm using OBS Studio in order to, uh, well, with a, with a web view, in order to, well, get the, get the notifications. Uh, so there are a lot of how-tos on YouTube and on uh, Streamlabs itself, how to integrate all of this stuff. Uh, but it's, uh, yeah, Streamlabs for the notification stuff, uh, you can set it up over there. And same goes for the chat and integrate it with OBS Studio because I I like OBS Studio a bit more compared to the Streamlabs OBS. I was using that before and it's well a bit it doesn't feel as, as fancy as spiffy as as OBS Studio. So yeah, partly. I have this new plugin though, it's called Stream Elements for OBS. So I've installed Stream Elements in OBS and now I've got a lot of pop-ups and screens uh, which notify me of stuff happening on my stream, uh, which is nice. At first I had to open up like a dozen of windows with 
one of them with the followers one of them with the chat one of them with whatever and now it's just all in OBS making it a bit more easier to manage What do I need to do over there? Um, that is probably already in the correct format. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, what do I need? Okay, type. Level. Uh, yeah, let's let's. Let's use the same level as in the contracts. Just to make it easy. I could use something else over here, but that's more because I can and not because I have to. Yeah, that's true. Valid point, I don't need to have the ads over here. Let's, let's just remove it. Great point, great point. Um, so now I need to map this to, uh, to the add speaker command. Um, I can use auto mapper for this, but for time's sake, I'll do it I'll do it by hand new uh, first name is speaker first name Speaker level. Um, um, return accepted. Probably need. Yeah, I want to create a grid. ID uh, just for tracking. Do we need an ID? Yeah, sure. No good. Who doesn't need an identifier? Yeah, I, I've got a co-worker in my team who's also anti-automapper. So we have lots of classes now doing the mapping of, well, what I'm doing over here. Uh, and I'm reading it and, and I'm like, yeah, if we just used automapper, it would be one line. Sure, you can shoot yourself in the foot with automapper. Uh, but yeah, you have to be careful with it. <laughs> I've, I've been at a job where we started using Automapper and the teammates I was working with didn't quite understand it properly yet. So what they were creating was, well, like the normal mapping, but also map using a resolver or something like it. And they had created a whole new class doing mapping logic and doing data access logic and calling services and stuff. 
and doing this in the mapper context so that i was like wow that's 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 not what it's meant to do it's much too heavy so it was a fun transition um there's probably not valid rest what i'm doing here now send the command to the queue so i have the connection um send command to storage queue this is the five minute thing i can do otherwise i'll have to do this next time <laughs> yeah yeah well that's probably also the reason why my co-workers are also anti-auto mapper people shoot themselves in the foot with it because they're not thinking they're just implementing um found is there some codes dot net v12 and v11 this is a new tag for me was this here last week also? Is there something on top? It's new for me at least. Well, let's go with P12 because that's better as 11. Uh, create a queue? No. Create a queue service. Azure Storage Queues. <clears throat> I'll do this in the API because, as I said, this will be a demo project. So I don't need to do this on the bestest of practices. It just need to be readable and understandable. Oh, that's it. <laughs> 12. So that might be it. Syracuse. Yes, I have a connection string. Cute line. Be done with the I configuration, if I'm not mistaken. What's it called? Oh, I haven't added it over here yet. Oh, that's my bad. Only in the ARM template. Yes. We'll probably want to do this strong typed later on. Um, oh, this is the command queue name. 
Dutch coins you can't Okay. And what does the help say more? Create the queue. Uh, yeah, I, I really dislike this option. It's useful. I just dislike it. Insert a message. Why is this if there? Isn't this a apparently not? It has to be JSON only string. Yeah. Um, JSON converter dot. I like to stick to the. JSON serializer dot serialize This method has async overloads. Okay, do the async So this is not what you want to do in a production environment you don't want to create a new queue client all the times uh, so you need to do this a bit more proper still is good enough for my scenario right now this to the my local secrets just to work with it over here I will just copy some secrets this has not been deployed yet Access keys. I have to this one and the cues speaker components. Okay, so I'm back. Um, so, Nightingale. Um, 
So Nightingale at speaker. So the add speaker will be a post. I'm in the speaker controller. Um, what's the launch settings? Speaker body will be JSON. It's pretty small. Mm, what do I need? First name, last name level. Level, what can it, what can I have as a level? Beginner. Let's go with beginner. Did I, do I need to have a number? I think the name is also, also works. Not sure though. Healthy, that's always good. So send 404. Um, yeah, MGI slash speaker. Elevation errors. Okay. Moderate. Yes, because moderate is the first zero one. Okay, so text doesn't work. Default. Command. This is what I expect it to be. Um, F11. Connection string, yes. Send. And we have an error. What does it say? Maybe I should have catched it. Create response. Invalid resource, maybe. Okay. It's possible. Let me send it again. Connection string. That one looks. Kind of okay. Oh, I see. I see what the problem is. Um, I'll unblur. This is the problem. Okay, so this should go a bit better. Send message F5. So it got sent to the queue. And I'm probably too slow, so let's check the logs over here, if I can still find it. If I can still find it. Execution count. So there was some real-time monitoring in the old UI. I guess I have to go to App Insights now. Um, 
past 30 minutes. Is there the worker? What is it logging? Shop Q trigger function processed. Live metrics, maybe. And I'll just call it a night. Continue on it next week, probably. Did it take me a bit too long? Um, so, but the message has been sent, a command has been sent to the queue. I didn't get an error, I got the GUID. And uh, let me just check the Cloud Explorer for a bit. Maybe it's still stuck on the queue, that would be great. Uh, but what I've done is send a command to, uh, to the storage queue. And it's now able to be picked up by the uh, by the. Uh, there's also something on the poison queue. Okay, so I've got a poison queue and an actual queue, so that's that's cool. Uh, next week I will be going further on implementing this stuff, creating an event-based system. Um, Thank you all for, for joining, Jonathan and Kevin and, oh, who else was here? Jonathan, Kevin, and that was it. So thank both of you for being in a chat with me. It was fun and uh, hopefully see you next time again.